Hey, folks, in this interview, I get to sit down with Alex Kwan. He's a photographer that's based in the Chicago area. Hey, folks, welcome back to another podcast interview. I'm sitting here with Alex Kwan. We're going to be talking about his history and some of his some tips and techniques about how he gets those amazing images that you will see in the blog post and in this episode as we go through it. Alex, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing over there? Uh, doing great. Just snowed this morning. Um, thanks for having me. Yeah, good, good. No, thanks for thanks for having on having you. It's, it's good to have you on. It looks like you are you are sheltering in place as you should be, right? <laughs> I am. I am trying to keep busy, trying to stay creative. Yeah, no, that's good. So this is this is good. I'm really excited to chat with you because I want to looking at your your stuff. First of all, congratulations. It looks like you clearly know what you're doing, and and your bio is pretty interesting. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that first before we dive into the the more meat of the interview. So give us an idea of the sort of your origin story. Where where are you from? How did you get started in photography? What drew you to this art form over others? Sure, um, I think. What has driven my story and partially my success um, up till now is uh, really how I got started, which is, I think, kind of an untraditional route. I came from the corporate world in finance, um, where I was working for about eight years and didn't really discover photography until I was 25, and that was about five years ago now. So I haven't really been even shooting um, for all that long um, in the grand scheme of things. Um, but, you know, one day, well, not one day, but, you know, it was kind of a, a combination of things uh, that, that was just happening in, in my life all at once yep. that drove me to start, uh, you know, finding uh, like a, a new purpose through my camera and through photography um, and also through travel. And I think that's a pretty common story for a lot of photographers that I've met. Um, you know, people develop a love for photography through, um, through travel and all of that. So, um, well, that's interesting because you, you went from that, that's sort of a left brain, right brain jump Mm -hmm. from finance into, into full on creative photography and travel. Was that, was that a jarring sort of switch or did it just like one day you had that epiphany moment where, you know, I just got to go do this. I'm I'm sick of this, sick of this number stuff. I'm going to pixels. (laughs) Yeah, it was, it was a really, uh, really tough transition definitely because for, um, yeah, like it's just a huge part of my life and then a, a huge part of my, you know, early, career life. Um, I was pretty much, you know, used to following the rules. Um, you know, I was doing finance work, so I was doing just like Excel work, kind of sitting at the desk, not really used to like, um, a lifestyle that was more on the go and creative. So, um, I definitely found that that was something that was just like inside of me that just hadn't really, uh, manifested in a sense yet. Yeah. So, um, yeah, pretty happy how things turned out and things have been, you know, accelerating pretty quickly. Um, like I said, that, that transition didn't happen all too long ago. So yeah, just, just kind of happy where it's going and enjoying the ride. Yeah. I mean, and your work is fantastic, man. I'm looking at your site now, which is at wayfaringprofessional.com uh, if you want to go check it out, but you're, um, like you're, you're spanning multiple genres, you know, I'm looking at architecture, mm-hmm. aerial, travel, landscapes, time lapse, wedding, people, etc. Like, and, yeah. and you're doing all of them well. So how <laughs> how is that <laughs> possible? You. How is that even possible? Is that, <laughs> what's the secret to doing multiple genres and crushing it on all of them? I have no idea. I think like uh, I think that's been a strength of mine is is kind of just trying. I think that's how I learn as well is uh, just picking up things and, and trying, uh, and most of the time, you know, going by trial by fire. Um, so a lot of the stuff, you know, that you see out there, the stuff that I would share, obviously, you know, um, you're, you're trying to share your best work and, and stuff like that. Um, but what, what isn't visible is kind of the mistakes and, and stuff that, you know, you learn along the way. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, it's, it's been, uh, just kind of a lot of grinding the past few years just to kind of accelerate that process. And, um, yeah, I've had some cool projects, um, on there that I'm pretty proud of. Um, yeah, so, yeah, people should definitely they should definitely check it out because I'm I'm going through it right now. And obviously, if, if folks that are listening to this and watching this, go over like I said, go to the website, and we'll have some sample images in the blog post as well. But uh, yeah, that that's a it's the 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 general consensus that I've heard over the years from photographers that are operating at your level that they tend to specialize, right? They tend to say, yeah, I'm an architectural photographer, or I'm a boudoir yeah. photographer, or, I'm a wedding photographer. The, 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 the the for the people that are entering into photography and maybe haven't selected a genre that they want to stick to yet, what advice would you give to them? You know, some photographers say just shoot everything until you find something that you gravitate towards. Yeah. Others say find one thing and drill into it and get good at it at all costs. What, what's your advice? Yeah, I, I I've seen both, and I think it just depends on your personality. Like for me, uh, I get. I get bored pretty easily and, um, kind of tend to lose my focus and then want to like jump to something else, um, you know, and in any given day. And I think just spanning a lot of different genres helps me keep creative and, um, really like take different things from each, each of those different, um, like professions or niches, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it and, mm -hmm. uh, bring all of that together and apply it. Um, and kind of create my own style through that. Um, so I would say, I would say, I guess, based on my experience, like, especially if you're starting out, try everything, um, and just keep kind of following the path that works. And for some people that leads to a niche where they can specialize, um, you know, whether it's photography, videography, uh, drone work, but I think we're in an age now where, um, all of this stuff is very accessible and, and obviously there's tons of, uh, very accessible education out there. So, um, you know, it's to your benefit if you can, if you can practice all of them, um, you know, why not? Yeah. And then, and then speaking of education, there, there are different kinds of learners out there, right? So there are people that, mm -hmm that, um, you know, they, they learn best in a classroom environment. Some people can just read a book and, and, you know, absorb the information and go execute it. Other people need one-on-one -on -one instruction. Well, how, what's your modality of learning? What, what gets the information sort of matrix into your head? Uh, well, I am a terrible book learner. Um, and I think that's why, you know, my previous career didn't really work out is I just wasn't that great at, um, kind of, you know, absorbing information, yeah. um, and applying it that way. It was more, um, and you know, in that setting, I was still able to apply it where, um, once I started getting going and, and, and actually doing it, that's when it started to click for me. It wasn't, you know, when I was sitting there listening to directions and stuff like that, it was more when I was out there and I, w I had my hands kind of, um, in my, my, my mind kind of running, trying to solve a problem. And I think that's what translated really well to photography because um, it's a very technical, um, when you start, it's a very technical, uh, just kind of form yeah. of art and, um, you know, just picking that up and getting kind of lost in it and learning all the settings and learning, you know, the aperture, what, what happened to an image when you played with ISO and, and your shutter speeds and experimenting with that and all the cool things that could come out of that. Uh, really is something that just like kind of, you know, just engrossed me for a really long time. Um, yeah. and then, and then that turns into, uh, uh, moving pictures, right? Like video. And then, and then you have all these other, you know, toys that come along like, like drones and stuff. And it's, it's like the perfect playground for someone that learns, um, by doing. And that's me, man. That's why I'm in it. Cause it's, it's, I, I like to say photography is, in, in no specific percentages, but it's it's technology, so it appeals to the mm -hmm. geek side of us. Um, it's uh, art, so it, uh, it appeals to that side of us, the sort of art, yeah. artistic side. And then it's also psychology, 
when you're dealing with other people and photographing people and models and, and that sort of thing. And it's, it's, yeah. it's so it, it could never, ever get boring. You're always, there's always some new tech. There's always a new technique. There's always a new person to photograph. So it's always absolutely. Great. Yeah. How did you get to the, that point of inflection though? Because a lot of photographers will, you know, they'll talk about what you've done. We'll say, you know what, uh, I'm, I'm really not cut out for this job. Yeah, I went to school for it and it's, mm-hmm. you know, the money's OK. And but but it takes a special person, I think, to cut the cord and say, you know what, this ain't working. I'm not happy. I'm going to go do this thing that's polar opposite from what I've been on the path for for all these years and go make a mm-hmm. go of it. How did you get to that inflection point and what was the push to get you over the edge? Because it's scary, right? Oh, it's terrifying. Yeah. Um especially when it comes to, you know, at the end of the day, you have to make an income. Um, and it totally changes how you view, um, the, you know, just photography as an art form when you have to derive your income from it. Mm -hmm. Um, and for me, I think it worked out well, you know, I think I, I, I resented and I, I use that word specifically because, um, when I first came out, I was like, oh, I wasted all this time, you know, pursuing the wrong path. Um, but I'm kind of, you know, in hindsight, glad that that happened because um, I had taken that path first, right, and, and figured out that that wasn't for me um, early on. So, and, and, and it allowed me to build up some savings and kind of have um, uh, that confidence that there was that fallback plan if it didn't work out for me. So... That's that's kind of how I went about it. Um, that being said, it was still very difficult, and um, a lot of that journey was like mentally very difficult. Um, just going from kind of like that comfortable um, having having a steady paycheck and everything to this like entrepreneurial lifestyle, um, and all of that all of that kind of combined, and um, you know, there's there was definitely times where I was like, man, like. I could go back and, and not have to worry, especially like, you know, in recent months with, with kind of everything going on and a lot of, you know, contracts being canceled and stuff like that. Um, but I think, I think like the timing again, kind of worked out where, um, I had been, I'd been through some of those like low points and, um, you know, figured it out. And thankfully, you know, this time it's, I've kind of, learn how to handle it better. So yeah, um, and that's, that's, that's the true entrepreneurial thing, right? It's like mm-hmm. when you, it, the, the thought of failing is scarier than failing, right? Cause if you, yeah. if you try something and fail, you kind of know, Oh, it wasn't that bad. But if you've never failed, it's that fear of how horrible it could be if I lose this thing or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's, that's really interesting. You know, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about, um, you know, I'm just while you're talking, I'm scrolling through your images here and enjoying them. But you're um, a travel photographer, right? You've, you've been to some amazing places looking at your images mm-hmm. and created images there. How does that work? Like when you when you say decide you want to go somewhere in Asia and do photos or in the mountains or, you know, some city, do you plan out? what your journey is going to be, you know, sort of before the weeks beforehand, knowing that I'm going to get this picture, that picture, this picture, that picture, and then Mm -hmm. load out accordingly? Or is it just, you know what, I feel like going to Singapore, you know, and you drop yourself there and start making great images. How does it, what's your mindset there? Uh, I think it's a balance. I think it's um, a little bit of blending kind of the experience, um, from my previous career and then kind of more my personality that's more free flowing and kind of go with the flow. Um, when, and I think it's changing over time too. Um, especially as I get involved in projects, you know, depending on who I'm working with, they might like more of a structured, like this is what's going to happen. This is where we're going to shoot, you know, and kind of had that, have that all structured out and put out and laid out. Um, so we have like a good idea of what's going to happen. Um, and I'm finding that that as time goes on, it's it's easier for me, um, more as a business owner than a photographer to just kind of um, start planning those things out because it's just much more efficient and there's uh, more things that that time could be spent on. But um, I do, if I have the freedom to, um, 
really love and i think this is where the best results come is where yeah i do like enjoy being just kind of dropped in a place um and shooting kind of um what my eye sees or like what what kind of happens because in my opinion the best moments are unplanned right like mm -hmm. um especially when it comes to things like landscape imagery and sunsets and sunrises you know there's only so much you know luck you know a lot of there's there's a big factor of luck in in that in getting the right kind of lighting and and, and setting um so you know i think it i guess the answer is is a combination but if i had to choose it would be to just kind of go with kind the flow and, and para, running down style right yeah parachute in and you got your gear and now you're just you know on a mission to capture capture great <laughs> images let's, let's talk about the gear a little bit uh and then i want to transition into sort of your what your post-processing workflow is and if you're if you're in that modality of you know i'm just going to drop in and, and and come out with great images how do you prepare for that right so you you yeah. gotta you, are you what's in your kit in other words are you bringing you know just a, a range of lenses and bodies and drones and 360 cameras and all that stuff and then you know just sort of huffing it out or do you are you the minimalist photographer how does that work for you oh i'm uh <laughs> and the, the people that know me um yeah I, I just carry way too much gear <laughs> um i could i could go grab my bag it's a it's like a 35 or, or something liter um get so bag and it's just massive it's like bigger than my torso um <laughs> but yeah i um i kind of got popular for just carrying around like 50 pounds of gear when i was like backpacking um more gear than like the necessities <laughs> yeah yeah so, like just in case you never know right <laughs> yeah yeah um and yeah it, it was just like um because i guess i I try to do so many things. Um, I just kind of carry everything that I think I'll need to just be ready for the moment. And, and sometimes it's worked out where, you know, I've been able to kind of just reach in my bag and pull something out. And sometimes, you know, I'm just carrying all this stuff and I'm just expending a lot of extra energy for nothing. But, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's worked out. So yeah no it has it. <laughs> and you never know right i mean i i get that mindset i get that that i'm in the same mindset when i pack to go on like a family trip or something because he's like yeah my, my bag is there's always way too many clothes in there and made too way too many toiletries and ever and then when mm -hmm. i when you get back and you're unpacking you're like i didn't touch half the things in this bag <laughs> and i just yeah. lugged it around the world <laughs> for nothing and it always works out where when you leave something out you end up needing it Right. And so I'm just like, yeah. I'm just like, you know what? I'm throwing everything in here, and we're, we're not we're not touching it. This is this is what we're going with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get the feeling you're like me when it comes to packing because I'm like some people, some of my friends are are the minimalist. I'm like, yeah, I would never ever check a bag. I just got my I got my camera bag yeah. and my my carry on. And my mindset is, why put yourself through that, right? If you if you can check mm -hmm. a bag and have all your stuff with you in the room, why not just spend the extra thirty minutes or twenty minutes at the at the baggage claim and get your stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what are you trying to prove, man? <laughs> so, no, that's awesome. Like, no, so, I need this stuff. I need my 7200 and like. <laughs> and then you never use it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I just, I'm like you, man. I just, I, I have that Peak Design, the big Peak Design travel bag. And mm -hmm. in it is a Lumix S1 with a bunch of lenses. And that's the big Panasonic full yeah. frame camera. That and that thing. Camera, yeah. Yeah, it is amazing, but that thing that thing is like Thor's hammer. You know, it is not right. it's not light. I could go to battle with it. So, but I like it, you know, and I'm like you. I like to have have my stuff with me. Um, but yeah. I think the you know, I don't know about you like when when you get to your location, well maybe you you answer this. When you get to the location, if you have your backpack full of stuff, do you uh -huh. take that out like if you're going to like okay, we're going to go out and we go shoot, then we go grab some to eat and then go back to the room. Do you take everything with you or do you take a smaller bag with just the things you need for that particular adventure? Uh so yeah, that that was actually a new thing that I started doing was I I would just pack an empty uh smaller travel bag. Um I used like the wandered bag. Mm -hmm. And that would be kind of my like day pack or, or like run and gun, you know, travel bag. Um, and I would just pull that out and fill it up with, you know, 
less gear from yeah. kind of like my main gearbox and and run with that. So that was kind of a new thing. Yeah. But in, well, but before I did just carry all of it and the big thing. Yeah. The yeah. other scary part about that, especially with gear, is the the security, right? If you're traveling and you're leaving, you know, thirty grand worth of stuff in the room. And yeah. people have access to the room or they know you're a photographer. They see you coming and going with a the camera. Then, you know, so you have to keep that in mind when you're when you're yep. leaving all that gear in the room. Your computer probably is in there, all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. No more hostels. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. So so uh, as we as we come to a close here, I want to talk a little bit about your post-processing workflow. And then what okay. you do after the images are finished, you know, making the, the after the images are finished processing that if it's client work, obviously it's going to the client. But if it's personal work, I'm curious as to what your flow is and where you where are you posting things. But let's start with post processing. You come back from a trip, you know, you've got memory cards full of images. What happens then? Uh, so this is something that I'm really focusing on this year is um, just getting a lot more organized and getting my my workflow coming home um, more streamlined because I I have a pretty big folder right now that's called dump on my hard drive um, <laughs> <laughs> that I, I've kind of um, let get a little bit out of hand. But what my workflow that I envision going forward is, is, um, you know, when I get home taking those and I'm getting better at just kind of labeling. So now I'll just label by date, you know, month and day, um, and then kind of like a little description or like a location just to like throw those into. Um, I'll quickly cull through them. Um, I actually don't use Lightroom to like look through them. Then I think like I, I think a lot of people do. I, I use an, uh, a viewer called Faststone, and it's just super quick, and I could just tab through and, and delete and then move everything that I need. Um, and then that all goes into I have a bunch of hard drives sitting behind the camera here. Um, and then all of that gets backed up um, yeah, on a weekly basis. What, do, yeah. what are you backing up to? Are you go, going to Drobos or Synology or what, it, what, what, uh, what drives do you back up to? Um, I don't have like a, a RAID setup or anything like that yet. Um, okay. I've been wanting one. They're just so expensive. Um, yeah, they are. But, but probably worth it. Um, I'm just, I just have other drives that I have just – I have a backup, kind of like an extra copy. Very on cool. that's 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 basically it right now. Not, and then what's in, what's in that bag um, in terms of camera? Are you what, what uh, camera body are you shooting? Uh, what what brand? And then what lenses are, are do you use the most? Uh, I shoot Canon, and I have one uh, DX Mark II, which is my main um, for stills and video. And then I have a five D Mark IV, um, which I pretty much only use when I know I want like the extra resolution in an image. Um, and then I use a ton of different lenses. Um, I actually don't have a standard, uh, zoom lens. I don't have a 24 70. I, the only lens I have in the standard focal lengths are a 50 millimeter prime. Uh, that's a Sigma and I love, I love Sigma glass. So I have another 24 millimeter prime, mm -hmm. um, use those primarily for, you know, low light shooting, video work, um, and then I also use my 1635 Mark III and a 7200, um, mostly for, yeah, just, uh, running gun shooting or, or landscape or kind of whatever situation I need. Yeah. Um, and I, I, see, I see a lot, I see a fair amount of long exposure shots in your, in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you're carrying a tripod around with you as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the brand I use there is Three Legged Thing. They mm -hmm. have really cool products. Um, yeah. I actually like them more for the L brackets that they have. They're super handy. I have them on both of my bodies. Very cool. Okay, then then what? So uh, in terms of the image processing, because your your processing skills are are on point too. So what are, what what are you what software are you using? What's your workflow there? So I use um, Lightroom. And Photoshop combination of the two, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'll uh, do a lot of kind of like the base layer editing in Lightroom, and then move into Photoshop, um, and add add some you know sharpening and some some effects I picked up along the way. Um, recently, I've I've started using Luminar and, and 
not really using it as a standalone software, but as a plugin. Mm -hmm. um, it really speeds up certain really technical editing processes um, yeah. a lot. And it's like just sky it's replacement. Just really, <laughs> yeah, sky replacements, um, just blending. Um, yeah, I think they have like object mapping now too. It's it's like mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's yeah, it's pretty insane. So mm -hmm. then, uh, what's next? For you, I mean, right now as we record this, um, it is April, right? So we're okay. April 2020. So historically, people will know that this is in the middle of that whole global pandemic and everyone's shut down, travel's restricted, et cetera. But once all that yeah. stuff is lifted, right. what, uh, what, what's, what's on the, the calendar for, for you? Um, nothing, nothing penciled in, unfortunately. Um, yeah. There's just too much uncertainty. Yeah. Um, I would really like to get some trips that were canceled back on the calendar. Um, I was supposed to go, actually, this la this past weekend, I was supposed to be coming back from Patagonia. Um, uh -huh. So I'm kind of bummed out about, yeah, just like, you know, whatever whatever was out there that I, I potentially missed. Yeah. So ho hopefully we'll be able to get that back on. Um, and I don't know. Yeah, like, got a couple content projects, thankfully. So stuff to keep me busy. Um, and hopefully, you know, hopefully that keeps coming in. Um, oh, yeah. And, yeah. But, but That's... once, once the quarantine is, is kind of lifted, I, I'm on a flight somewhere. <laughs> You're gone. Yeah. yeah. I'm gone. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. So if, if people want to reach out to you to connect with you, like either, you know, through social media or if they want to hire you and contract you to do a job, et cetera, what's the, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you? Uh, best way is through email, and that is uh, my first name, alex.qian at wayfaringprofessional.com. Um, you can find that on my website at, wayfaring, at wayfaringprofessional.com. Um, I'm also on social media, and I'm probably on there too much, but um, yeah. my, my Instagram is just my name, my full name, um, at underscore Alex Kwan, and that's across all platforms. Awesome. Well, cool, man. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today to do this again. Congratulations on uh, on building what looks to be an amazing body of work. And uh, yeah, it sounds like you're you're living the dream, literally. You know, you made the pivot in from from one path to another and crushing it on this path. So congratulations, man. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. OK. All right. You be safe and I'll talk to you soon. This episode was made possible by our friends at Fujifilm. Make images, share stories, and experience moments at the speed of life with Fujifilm. Thank you for staying home with us.